learning is a very popular method that is used to solve current day artificial intelligence problems. Right from speech to image recognition to video processing, deep learning has its... Question! Already? How is deep learning related to digital IC design? Well, nothing much actually. Now that I have your attention, let me tell you about my course, Digital IC Design. Jokes apart, it's interesting to note that though artificial neural networks was widely popular in the 80s and 90s, it is improved hardware and improved computational efficiency that has made deep learning widely popular in today's world. What is computational efficiency? One is how fast, second is how much energy. Right? There is a lot to do just with delays. Right? How fast and can it be made faster itself is going to consume us in this course. So therefore, I will not have time to touch upon how much energy and stuff like that. I will focus only on delay. So before we jump into the details of this course, I think it's important to get a feel for what a microprocessor chip looks like in today's technology. It's a 14 nanometer FinFET SOI technology, right. the size of a 10 rupee coin, 8 billion transistors. Six quadrants with four cores each. So in the back end of line, they have 17 levels of metal in that microprocessor. Um, if I just lay out all the interconnects, the metals, in one straight line, right? It turns out that the length of that interconnect It's an astonishing number. The total length is 11 kilometers. After you're done with this course, you should be able to characterize the key delay quantities of a standard cell. You should be able to evaluate the power dissipated in the circuit, both dynamic and leakage. Then design a circuit to perform a certain functionality with specified speed, okay? Identify the critical path of the combinational circuit. Then uh, convert a combinational block to a pipeline circuit. Pipelining is another fantastic concept where you can improve throughput of your system. How do you do that, right? Where do you go and put your flops? How do you make sure that the circuit throughput can double, triple and so on, right? Then you should be able to calculate the maximum worst case operating frequency of a design circuit. It's also good to know upfront what this course is not about. This course is not about automated tool flow. It's definitely not about Verilog design. You will not write a single line of Verilog code in this course. Okay, it's not about digital design in the conventional industry sense. This is digital circuit design. The digital logic design is a prerequisite. Okay, you should know what a multiplexer is, what a decoder is. And it's not about microprocessor instruction design, where I try to find out what best new instruction I should introduce in the microprocessor to make it better. It's not about that. These are your textbooks. Jayan Rabai and uh, Ananta Chandrakasan, you have a book called Digital Integrated Circuits. CMOS VLSI Design, right? Neil Weste and David Harris. So, some modules I have taken from Rabbi, some I have taken from Western Harris. Mm -hmm.